one of the things that maybe you should understand by the Norwegian society is that in, in the 70s, we had a very large and active women's movement, which integrated into politics very early. And I think uh, one of the reasons why uh, our society, and maybe the Scandinavian societies, looks a little bit different on family mm -hmm. policies than, than uh, a lot of other countries is that in Norway and Sweden and Denmark, women entered politics as a result of the, of the uh, NGO work, the women's movement work. There was much more women in politics in the 80s. And, and we had, in fact, the first uh, uh, female uh, uh, Prime Minister, but I think we entered politics very early, and because of that, a lot of those issues that was looked upon as private issues, in fact, become political issues mm -hmm. in Norway, and they became into the political parties' agendas. And just to go back to one thing that you said, because I think this is so important. Of course, we had a women's movement here in the 60s and 70s also, mm -hmm. but it did not result with women immediately going into positions of political power, either locally, on state levels, or nationally. In fact, the U.S. Senate, up until the early 1990s, had only ever had one mm -hmm. or two sitting female senators at any time. I mean, that recently, there were only mm -hmm. one or two women in the U.S. Senate. And even now, we just have 20, which is one-fifth of the Senate. Why was it possible for women in Norway to immediately go from the women's movement into political life? Uh, I, I think it has something to do with our election system, too. It must. Uh, yes. Or when money. We, yeah, yeah. And of course, yes, well, we have, we have a different uh, election system, and we also, of course, don't have all of this. Uh, our politics are financed differently than American politics are. <laughs> We are, in a way, governmental financed. You might react to that, but the fact that uh, most of the political parties in Norway will get sponsored, mon get money from the government on the local, the regional, and national level based on the percentage of the last election. So you get, you know, to run your parliamentary group, to run your uh, local constituency group, to run your uh, party, you get that type of financing. Uh, I think um, I think that's uh, it, you might discuss it uh, if it's good or bad. Some would say that it uh, it then of course always give the bigger parties more money because they did a good re-election the last time. Uh, it it can firm the structures in a way because it, uh, but but on the other hand you you don't have to go around getting all the money to run a campaign, which I know for a lot of women feels more difficult than for men, and uh, sort of getting money to to and and. Uh, the second thing I think is we have we have districts, election districts that you parties put up a list. So it's not one person who was voted in from a, from a region or district. It will be my, in my constituency. We are 16 members of parliament who are nearly all political parties are represented from that uh, region. And for my party, there are now six members of parliament. Uh, from that district. That means it was easier to put up more women on the lists. And it also had the effect that to get votes, you also had to appeal to women. So I think there was a, uh, some parties had a quota system. I think in most other parties would put up more women on the list because they said, if we don't have enough women, if we don't have enough young people on the list, we will lose on the youth vote, or we will lose on the, out on the women's vote, and so that led to a lot of a lot of uh, women into politics.